Hello everyone, welcome back to Dynamic Modeling of Buildings and Cities, and this is Josh. Today I'll be covering about some analysis and shadow studies in 3ds Max. So, so the shadow studies will be different from Grasshopper and a Ladybug tools because 3ds Max is more of a modeling tool, whereas Grasshopper and Ladybug is more of, a, of an analysis tool. But this is the closest way for 3ds Max to cut into sim, uh, in a similar manner with the Grasshopper and Ladybug. So as you can see here, I've already created a model over here. So it's sort of like an urban environment using Gribble and the Mesh and Gribble. And right now I'm just going to add the sun and daylight system through create systems daylight system. And then just drag the area like so. So this is basically the sun position and that's sort of like the target area. So the way it works in 3ds Max, it, you don't need the sun to shine directly into the position directly into the model you can actually position it somewhere else like even though if it's here and the model is there it's still the, the sun and the shadow still works because this is sort of like creating a scenario of a real real sun rather than a spotlight so if you go to this modifier tab and then press this one here so as you can see, it has a lot of a lot of parameters and settings to to be changed, and certain vector standard. Yeah, and then change you can change actually the the location and the location date, time, and hours depending on depending on the time range that you want to have the sun analysis on. So first, they get location for, um, currently in Australia, Melbourne. So just go to Melbourne like so, and it'll position automatically based on the sun, the sun position in Melbourne. So right now it's positioned at uh, winter solstice. What you want to do is just do it in summer because it's much easier, and set it as nine because I want to have an as analysis from nine a.m. to for uh, to two p.m. So what you want to do is not this. It's very different from Ladybug because in Ladybug, as we can, uh, as we could see in the previous video, the Ladybug has a range tool that automatically analyzes the sun, uh, the sun, and the, uh, the shadow studies from uh, from the range that we input. But in here, it's sort of like manual, so you have to copy and paste each of the sunlight here, and then change the hours by itself. Copy again. Eleven. And copy again until 2 p.m. So one more, and there you go. So this is sun. The shadow will that's going to be casted. It will be on top of each other, so it's going to overlap and create a little darker spot. And that way we can see a little bit. Uh, we can see that it's sort of like the sun. Uh, the shadow side is in Ladybug. So from here, if you want to have a visualization, a really good visualization, I recommend to download V-Ray. And uh, since I've already done it, uh, since I've already done it, you want to have the V-Ray Sun rather than uh, rather than a standard sun. So go back to this modifier tab. It's currently loading. This moment, nope. And then change this to V-Ray Sun, and then click yes when it's ask V-Ray Sky Environment Map. Yes. And change it one by one. So I recommend if you want to have the VRA first before you copy it, because if not, you're just going to um, do it one by one like I do right now. But this is for the purpose of um, explaining to you that you can do it in VRA using VRA Sun. And VRA is more like visualization because VRA has an IPR that means that you can have like a live render when you're in a when you're in the viewport. So this is the last one for the VRA Sun. Yeah, there you go. So you don't actually need any any other modifier. You can like, just change this to change this to VRA viewport APR. 
and as you can see here, V-Ray renders this live. But this is currently it's quite too bright. So what you want to do is just to reduce the brightness. This, like for example, this is 05. Now the, the annoying thing is you cannot change this in, in, in one go. So point five. You just want to reduce the intensity of the sun. Zero point five. Zero point five. There you go. You can see that there's a uh, shadows casted in overlaps to one another because this is multi uh, this has multiple uh, sun um, casting casting to the um, radiates the whole model. So if you want to have a change again, so this might be quicker from the last from the previous one. So just check on this here. So it's multiplier. Don't need the multiplier. So it's filter, and then you can change the everything in here. You probably want to have the change on this intensity modifier. That's the first thing that you want to do. If not, it's going to be very, very bright, as we can see earlier. So for example, if you want to do it in winter time, just change it to winter, which is June in here. It's dark at the moment, but that's fine because we need to, we're going to copy this daylight system again. So as you can see here, just to re reiterate, there's only one shadow casted, but when I copy, you will see the growth that the shadow is casted, and you can see it's quite light. Uh, it's getting lighter right now, and as you can see the shadow casted is multiplies. So just repeat the process again. So that's 11 a.m. So did 2 12. So to 1. And lastly, change it to 2 p.m. So as you can see here, so as you can see here, there's a lot of shadows casted. And this is a really good tool just to visualize uh, visualize the sun shadow and shadow studies in 3ds Max. It's not going to be as accurate as Ladybug because again, this is a modeling tool rather than a an analysis tool. But this is sort of like giving an idea on how to do it in 3ds Max when and to see if you're building custom another uh, overshadow too much to another building. Like for example, this one here, you can see directly that there's there's a lot of overshadowing over here and you can change your model to suit. So that's it for today and thank you very much.